You've got to be joking. My brother Daniel looked at me like I was the dumbest kid alive. Come on, I said. It'll be fun. Get into the Halloween spirit. He sighed, snatched the book out of my hands, and cracked it open. His eyes roved over the pages with feigned disinterest, but I knew that I had him hooked. He shut the book and held it at arm's length, scanning the cover. How to Summon Satan for Beginners, he read. Where did you even find a book like this? I shrugged my shoulders. The internet, I said. He shook his head and let out a long, exasperated sigh. Fine, he said, I'll play along, if it'll make you happy. Just please don't let mom find out. She'll skin us both alive. He opened the book and lay it on the ground between us. Okay, step one, he said. We need the blood of a sacrificial lamb. Where are we going to get that? He frowned and shook his head as he stared down at the page. You know what, he said? We don't have any of this stuff. Well, I said, we can just use Kool-Aid. That's red. It should be close enough. Good idea, said my brother. We also need the horns of a goat, the bones of a righteous man, and finally, a scream of despair. Well, I know about the first one, I said. Dad has something in the medicine cabinet called horny goat weed. That ought to do the trick. And I know about the second one, said my brother. We can use the dog's bone. That only leaves a scream of despair. Well, we should be able to provide that, I said. My brother nodded. Okay, he said. Let's get everything together. We both went our separate ways. I went to the medicine cabinet and the pantry, and my brother went to find the dog's bone. When we returned, we piled the items together next to the book and looked again at the instructions. Okay, said my brother. It says to mix the blood with the horns of the goat and stir with the bones of the righteous man. Add sugar to taste. Okay, I said. We mixed the objects together according to the instructions. Now, my brother said, the scream of despair. All of a sudden, he let out a rather too convincing wail that startled me and sent ripples through the mixture. The liquid in the Kool-Aid jug wobbled for a moment, turned bright green and then black, and then began to smoke. A faint voice could be heard, murmuring something that could not quite be made out. It grew steadily, slowly, louder. What the hell? said the voice. And suddenly the Kool-Aid exploded with a terrible, infernal roar that shook the house, showering my room with red. Standing where the Kool-Aid jug had been was a terrifically ugly creature. It had scaly red skin, two large, shiny black horns, and a face that only a blind mother could love. Its feet were cloven hooves, and its long, reptilian tail swished about impatiently. It was dripping with red Kool-Aid. It ran a yellow-clawed finger over its arm and popped it into its mouth. Is this Kool-Aid? it asked. My mouth hung open so low that a fly could have landed inside of it. But my brother, thankfully, had the presence of mind to say, Uh, yeah. The creature ran another finger along its arm and then once again licked it. Then it smiled. Delicious, it said, but sticky. It spotted the book on the floor, bent down, and picked it up giving it a long, searching look. Say, where did you get this book? The creature asked. Uh, the internet, I replied. Huh, said the creature. Excuse me, sir, I ventured, hoping that the creature before me was indeed a sir, and I had not just terribly offended it. 
Yes, said the creature. Are you, uh, I don't know how to ask this, but are you Satan? The creature finished for me. Yeah, I replied. Oh, without a doubt, said the creature. He opened his mouth to say something else, but he was interrupted by a loud banging on our front door. From behind the door, we could hear the sound of our old, crotchety, much-feared neighbor, Miss Cromwell. She was shouting in righteous indignation. I know you're in there, she yelled. That infernal racket you have been causing woke up my birds. My birds! Satan raised an eyebrow. Who is that? he asked. She sounds lovely. That's our neighbor, Miss Cromwell, said my brother. It's probably best that you don't answer the door. She's seriously mean. She's got a big leather handbag filled with fruit that she'll smack you right on the head with. Oh, come on now, replied Satan. He set the book back down on the floor and made his way to the front door. Surely you're exaggerating. From our room, we heard the sound of the front door open and of Satan warmly greeting Miss Cromwell. What followed was an incoherent torrent of abuse in shrieking old lady soprano and the familiar sound of a handbag colliding with a skull. After a minute or two, Miss Cromwell seemed to have tired herself out and we could hear her heavily panting on the porch in exhaustion. Huh, came Satan's voice. You might be just the ticket. There was a sudden scream cut short by a wet, ripping sound. Footsteps of cloven hooves approached our bedroom, and before long, Satan stood in the doorway. He was clad in Miss Cromwell's skin, which stretched and bulged in all the wrong places. His horns stuck out, and on top of one of them, a rather bruised banana had been impaled. How do you like my new clothes? asked Satan. After a long, awkward pause, I said, Uh, they're really nice? Satan frowned. Oh no, he said. I was hoping they were hideous. Uh, don't worry, replied my brother. They are. Satan grinned. And you're not just saying that, he said. Definitely not, said my brother. I've never seen a human skin suit before, and frankly, it makes me want to vomit. Fantastic, exclaimed Satan. He clapped his hands together. Now I'd better get going. Got people to kill, worlds to conquer, you know, same old, same old. He bent down and picked up the book. Do you mind if I keep this, he asked. We were both too stunned to reply. This did not seem to faze him, however. He thumbed to a page near the back and read out an incantation in a language that sounded like a trash compactor clearing its throat. A rift appeared in the reality of our bedroom, rippling out waves of distortion around it. It expanded into a wide black mouth and demons began to pour out by the dozens. There were gray scaly ones, green slimy ones, even one that was pink and fuzzy. Before long, they had filled the room and were bumping shoulder to shoulder. Satan spat out a few more arcane words and the portal closed, vanishing without a trace. He beamed as he eyed his work. Fantastic, he said. Now let's go get some more human skin suits.